Well, hello everyone. This is Mike Howard, and I am here with... Beverly Howard. We're going to do a Bible study. We are in the seventh session in the spring quarter, and the title of this lesson is Wrestled. It's in Genesis chapter 32, and I'll cover a couple of verses in chapter 33. It's about the time that Jacob wrestled with God, and there are lessons in that for us. So let's go ahead and get started. The, I'm going to break it down into four sections. The first section is an overview or kind of a, a background summary of Jacob's journey of faith. The second part is when Jacob prepares to meet his brother Esau as he returns to the promised land. The third part is a beautiful, beautiful prayer that Jacob prays. And the fourth part, which is the heart of the lesson, is the Jacob wrestling with God's story. So let me go back and get us caught up with Jacob's faith journey. If you remember, even before he was born, Jacob was wrestling. He winds up wrestling with God today, but even before he was born, he was wrestling in utero with his brother Esau. Remember, Becca, Rebecca said uh, that she couldn't understand what was going on when she was pregnant, so she prayed, and God said, well, you've got twins, and they're wrestling with each other because the younger will win out and the older will serve the younger. And that was prof prophetic. So Jacob then, as he, they're both older now, they're both, I believe, right at 40 years old. And uh, Esau sells his birthright to Jacob for a pot of stew. And then uh, Jacob and his mom uh, deceive Isaac into giving the family blessing that was the blessing of Abraham, the Abraham covenant to Jacob. So that was an interesting story. So Esau became very upset, as you might imagine, and because of that, he threatened to kill Jacob. Well, Jacob decides it's probably time to get out of town. He wants to stay alive. So uh, he goes in, meets with Isaac, and he and uh, Isaac and Rebekah send him off to Laban's house in Haran to find a wife and to kind of be uh, safe from his brother Esau. Well, you remember that journey. He sees a staircase or a ladder to heaven. And from and we know that, that Jesus says that he is that ladder that delivers God's word from heaven to earth. So he sees that. So God gives him a vision into the spirit world uh, in a dream. Well, he's going to have another vision in chapter 32, verses 1 and 2. So he stays with Laban until he earns his daughter in marriage. That would be Rachel. He worked for seven years, but then Laban deceives Jacob and gives him Leah instead. But he says, I'll also give you Rachel if you'll agree to work seven more years. He did. So now 14 years into this, uh, Jacob has 12 children and he is ready to go back home uh, to the promised land. But Laban talks him into staying and working his flocks for six more years, and he does. So during those six years, God blesses Jacob with great wealth. A lot of sheep, a lot of goats, a lot of cows, a lot of camels, a lot of servants. Uh, he was really, really blessed. So God blessed during these 12, 20 years, God blessed Jacob with three, four, two, or four, depending on how you define it, wives, 12 children, and a lot of earthly goods. So then <clears throat> Jacob, uh, I already covered most of that, uh, and then Jacob is now ready to return to Canaan, but instead of getting, instead of, instead of telling Laban goodbye publicly, he, he leaves at night, takes everybody with him, takes 10 days for Laban to catch up with him, and Laban's very upset, but God warns Laban not to lay a hand on Jacob. So at the end of that visit, they form a uh, a treaty. And so now Jacob is looking at the next step. And the next step is he must face his brother Esau. And that's when we get to the part of Jacob's life where he wrestles for his rebirth. So if you remember the first wrestling match, it was before his earthly birth. And this wrestling match occurred just before his spiritual birth. So interesting. So he's preparing to meet Esau. Uh, Jacob sent, he, he, he's ready. 
he thinks, to meet Esau. So he sends messengers to let Esau know that he's back. And uh, the messengers come back and say, well, uh, we told him and he's going to come see you and he's bringing 400 men. Well, that that scares poor Jacob. He is, I mean, what could 400 men mean other than he's going to kill him and everybody with him? So Jacob then begins to fearfully plan for the worst. And uh, so his, here is a map of <clears throat> where all of this is happening. He's come home from Haran and he's camped out here on the, a little uh, river that feeds into the Jordan River, the Jabbok. And that's where he, uh, that's where we find him in chapter 32. And he's getting ready for his wrestling match with God. <clears throat> now, the first two verses of chapter 32 are pretty interesting because now he's back in the promised land and God is actually going to open his spiritual eyes again, just like he did with the ladder that goes from heaven to earth. He's going to let Jacob see what's going on in the spirit world. And what Jacob sees is an entire encampment of angels surrounding him. And so Jacob is just amazed that he's surrounded by angels. So he calls it the place of two camps, his camp with his family and his animals and God's camp with his angels. So Jacob's prayer, this is the next, and I, the, I think this is one of the most beautiful prayers uh, that you can find in the, in the Old Testament. <clears throat> it's in chapter 32, it starts in verse 9. Then Jacob prayed, O God of my father Abraham. Remember his prayer, at the, and I'll get to that at the very end, but his prayer was, you are, I know, the God of my father Abraham and the God of my father Isaac. And oh, by the way, if you do all of these things, then I'll let you be my God too. Well, here he is, he's back home. And now he's saying, oh God of my father Abraham, God of my father Isaac, you who said to me. Now the, the best part of this prayer is he's going to tell, he's going to remind Mama, God yeah. of what he promised him uh, on the way out. Okay, he says, you who said to me, go back to your country and your relatives and I will make you prosper. And then he says in his prayer, and this is just so beautiful, he says, I am unworthy of all the kindness and all the faithfulness that you have shown me. I had only my staff when I crossed this Jordan on my way to Haran, but now I have come home with so much that we have had to form two separate camps. And then he goes on to say in verse 11, this is his prayer. He says, he reminds him, he says, God, this is your command that tells me to come back home. He says, therefore, I'm saying, I'm asking, I'm begging, please save me, I pray, from the hand of my brother Esau, for I'm afraid. I'm afraid that he's going to come with these 400 men. He's going to attack me, and he's also going to attack the mothers with all their children. So he's fearful, and rightfully so. And then he goes on one more time, and he says, but... You have said, I will surely make you prosper and I will make your descendants like the sand of the sea, which cannot be counted. So he keeps reminding God of what his promises were to him, even though he's fearful that Esau is coming to kill him. So Jacob now has to get ready to meet Esau. First thing he does was he takes his camp and divides it into two groups. And his logic here was, as Esau is attacking one of the groups, maybe the other group can run for their lives. And then he sends a lot of stuff, gifts, and he sends them in four separate herds. There's a herd of goats that he sends, 220 goats. And then right behind them is a herd of sheep, which is 220 sheep. And then right behind them, he sends 30 camels plus their babies. Right behind them, he sends 50 cattle with their, uh, their well, and then he sends right behind them 30 donkeys. So as Esau is coming to meet him, he runs into first the herd of goats, and they say, these are a gift from your brother. And then he, a little bit further, he runs into the herd of sheep, this is another gift. A little bit further, this is camels. This is cattle. This is donkeys. So, And Jacob's logic there is, I will uh, soften his heart. 
And with all these gifts, surely he'll know that I have returned and I want to make friends. So that night, the night before Esau shows up, Jacob got up. He took his two wives and his two female servants. That's the mother of all his children, mothers of all his children, and his 11 sons and his daughter, it doesn't say, but crossed the ford of the Jabbok. Jabbok. Uh, that's the little river that's just to the east of the Jordan. And then after he had sent everybody and everything, uh, everybody across, then he sends everything, all of his possessions across as well. So everybody and everything is now on the south side of the Jabbok River. And Jacob then goes back by himself to the north side. And that's where the wrestling match occurs. So then Jacob left alone and a man came, he appeared, and he wrestled with Jacob until all night, until daybreak. And then when the man saw that he could not overpower Jacob, he just, Jacob wouldn't give up. He just kept wrestling. He, would, he just kept wrestling and kept wrestling and he wouldn't let go. Uh, so then the man touched the socket of Jacob's hip so that his hip was out of joint. So it was wrenched as he wrestled with the man. And then the man said, okay, that's enough. Let me go for it's daybreak. But Jacob said, I will not let you go unless you bless me. Remember, Jacob's big on blessings. He, he stole the birthright blessing and then he deceived his father into giving him the Abrahamic blessing. And now in this wrestling match, we're about to find out that the man is none other than God. He won't let go until he blesses him. So then the man asks Jacob, what's your name? Jacob, he replies, which means deceiver. And then the man said, your name is no longer, going. this is the new birth, your name will no longer be Jacob, but it will be Israel because you have struggled with God, he just identified himself, and with humans, meaning Esau, and then his father-in-law, Laban. And in those struggles, you have overcome. Jacob says, please tell me your name. But the man replied, why do you ask my name? And then the man blessed Jacob there. Jacob's reaction to this was interesting. He said, Jacob called the place Peniel, saying, it is because I saw God face to face, and yet my life was spared. So as the sun rose above Jacob, he has passed by Peniel, but he was limping because of his hip. That hip was a touch from God, letting him know that he's God. Therefore, and this is kind of commentary, therefore to this day, the Israelites do not eat the tendon attached to the socket of the hip joint because the socket of Jacob, Jacob's hip was touched near that tendon. But then the rest of the story happens in 33 when Esau finally shows up and Jacob is out in front of his wives and his children and he's leading the way because he's the new Jacob. He's Israel. Instead of hiding behind all of them, he's out in front of them leading the way to meet his brother. And instead of killing him, Jacob runs to meet Jacob and embraces him through his arms. Yeah. Must be Esau. Es Esau. Yeah. And uh, no, Esau ran to meet Jacob, oh, ran to meet Jacob. and, oh, and embraced him. Okay. He threw his arms around Jacob's neck and he kissed him and they together wept. So it was a great reunion. Then Esau <clears throat> looks up and now they're, they're, you know, they've hugged, they've kissed, they've had a great reunion. And then Esau looked up and behind Jacob, he sees all the women and all the children. And he says to Jacob, who are these with you? And Jacob answered, and I put these in for a real special reason. He says, they are the children that God has graciously given to your servant. See the word gracious there. And your servant. Yeah, your mm -hmm. servant. Okay, and then uh, he then Esau says, but I, you know, I, tell me, what were all those herds that that I saw on my way to see you? And and he said to Jacob says back, those are those are gifts to you. He says, please accept those gifts that were brought to you, for God has been what 
He's been gracious to me, and I have all that I need. And because Jacob insisted, Esau accepted it. The beauty of the prayer is that God, is that Jacob tells God, you promised me this, and therefore I'm holding you to your promise. The beauty of how he speaks to Esau is he realizes that it wasn't any of him, even though he was putting sticks in the watering troughs and doing all these other things, that wasn't really him. It was all because of the grace of God. Mm. So let's do a quick summary. You remember, this is what God said in return to God's promise to be Jacob's God, the same way he was Abraham's and Isaac's. Jacob's response to this vow was his vow, which says, if God, if you will be with me, and if you will watch over me on this journey that I am taking, and if you will give me food to eat and clothes to wear, and he's not asking for much, and look at all the things that God gave him. Oh my goodness. And God was always with him, and he always watched over him. He says, so if I return safely to my father's household, then then the Lord you will be my God. He's there. He's returned. And now the problem of Esau has been solved. Mm. He's back. He's back safely. And now he can truly say, even though I was vowing with a lot of ifs, you still were so gracious that now you have satisfied all of those and now you truly are my God. Mm. The truth is God has always been with and watched over Jacob and God blessed Jacob, not with just food and water, but with wives and children and many possessions. Now God is gonna finally return Jacob safely to his homeland. So how do we apply this beautiful, beautiful story? Well, it's a story that's very personal to me. I recently traded in my 12-year-old Honda for a new car, and one of the options on that car was a trial period of, they call it self-driving. And that's when you push a button and the car, in theory, takes you to your destination. So I have to also tell you that for the last eight months, I've been dealing with a lot of pain in my right hip. And they've tried, they, the doctors have tried everything, physical therapy, shots, all the things that they can try. And the answer is I'm going to have to have a full hip replacement. So this week I was driving down to meet with the surgeon and I decided that I was going to let the car take me there on its own. I wanna tell you, I was very nervous. My hands did not get far from the wheel it, I probably was playing, paying closer attention to the road with the car driving than I would have been if I had been driving. Ultimately, the car arrived at the surgeon's office without any problems. But I tell you this, it's a computer and I don't trust computers. Mm -hmm. And I knew that it could fail at any minute. And so I was nervous. I was nervous and fearful the same way that Jacob was in his early faith journey about whether or not God would take care of him. Well, now I'm at the surgeon's office and I find out that they're going to use a robot to perform my hip surgery. And now if I wasn't nervous about the car driving me there, now I'm really nervous that a robot is going to actually do the surgery. But then they calm my fears by telling me that actually the surgeon is going to guide the robot, and that's gonna make it a lot better. Well, all of a sudden I said, well, I feel a lot better about it, but you know something? As a Christian, I actually know who is gonna be doing mm -hmm. the surgery. Mm -hmm. Because you see, it could be a great surgeon. It could be a great robot. It could be a great self-driving car. But at the end of the day, it's a great God mm -hmm. that I serve. Mm -hmm. I don't trust in any of those things or any of those people, but I do trust in God because you see, he's always been gracious mm -hmm. to me. Mm -hmm. 
So let's say this is our faith journey. We wrestle, I do, I know you do as well, with God's word in that we struggle to trust in and then submit to his word and his plan. Mm -hmm. The older I get, the less I struggle. Mm -hmm. The enemy always is whispering of fears. You know, Esau is going to kill you. You're going to have a bad surgery. Something bad's going to happen to you. And he whispers fears and doubts in our ears. And like I was about the self-driving car, I worry, will God get me home safely? The same way that Jacob did. And the answer is, yes. Yes, he will. Jacob, God touched in his hip. And for the rest of his life, as far as we know, he limped. And that limp was a constant reminder that God is gracious and faithful. Paul, the apostle Paul, had a thorn in the flesh. We think it probably was the, the opinion of the commentary is that it's because when he was blinded by the light that it did some damage to his eyes that he never recovered. But nevertheless, no matter what it was, he had a thorn in the flesh. And many of us, me personally, have experienced what I call God's corrective touch. And I will bear those scars my whole life, and they will be a remembrance to me of God's grace. Now, I'll tell you what your attitude should be about when you're limping or when you have this thorn in the flesh. It should be this way. Paul says in 2 Corinthians chapter 12, I asked God three times to take this thorn in the flesh away from me, but he told me back, he said, look, my grace is sufficient for you. For my power is made perfect in weakness. And then Paul says, therefore, my attitude is I will boast all the more gladly about my weaknesses so that Christ's power may rest on me. Mm -hmm. So why do I love this story? Well, Jacob struggles with his fears and his faith throughout his life. Some days he's the old Mike, he's Jacob. Some days he's the new Mike, he's Israel. But like me, most days he's a little bit of the old Mike and a little bit of the new Mike. But regardless, God always gives Jacob grace. But then, remember, Jacob refused to let go of God? Well, Jacob, the truth is, God will never let go of you. Pray with me. Father, what a great story. I know you and I have wrestled many times in my life. And I've always thought, I'm just never going to let you go. And in truth, it was you who were never letting me go, no matter how high the mountain, no matter how deep the sea, no matter how far, we can never get out of the love that you have for us. Thank you for this story. In Jesus' name, amen. amen. Well, in the comment section below, let me know whether this new microphone is okay or if I need to get a new cable and go back to the old microphone. Until next week, know that we love you guys. Stay safe.